both Jim and Todd were involved in such uh, hearings over the course of their careers. And so we decided to stage a, a mock arbitration hearing of sorts. So go to take you back circa 1994. Todd lost his arbitration hearing against the St. Louis Cardinals. Jim is going to represent the cards in our hearing and Todd will represent himself and I will be the arbiter. Here we go. Jim and Todd, I want to thank you both for coming uh, to this arbitration hearing. I know, Todd, you're looking for $3.25 million. Your side and Jim, uh, Cardinals are countering at 2.7. So right. you're going to begin each with 90 seconds to state your case and then a chance for uh, rebuttals. And Jim, yes. I'll begin with you. 90 seconds on yes, the clock. Yes, thank you, Mr. Arbiter. Good yes. to see you, uh, Todd. Uh, here's our brief uh, here. You can take a look at that at your uh, convenience. Uh, that uh, outlines our case uh, today. Listen, we don't dispute the job that Todd Zeal has done for the St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, he was one of our best players. He, he led our team in uh, runs batted in this past season. He was second in home runs, second in doubles, and he had a terrific offensive season. The only issue, one of the big issues that we have are twofold. One, his pay raise from last year. He was making 1.025 last year. This year he's asking for a two million dollar raise which would put him at the highest paid on our ball club right now Ozzie Smith is our best player we think he's going to be a future Hall of Famer and he is uh, at three million dollars so this salary of three two five would take him above that uh, which we don't think is proper or fair within our structure he also when you look at the numbers overall he was second or third on our team in offensive categories uh, on our team and he was certainly below that in terms of power numbers within the league as third baseman. Of course, Matt Williams is one of the top third basemen in the league. So in addition to that, Mr. Arbiter, his defense this year was uh, below average. He really took a, a turn for the worse uh, at third base. I know we asked him to move from catcher to third. 923 fielding percentage, 33 errors, which was the second most of all third basemen in the National League. So we think that his asking price is too high. All right. Todd, you've got 90 seconds uh, to state your case. Well, thank you both for uh, allowing me to state my case here. I think the first thing that I'll note, as uh, Mr. Duquette said, is that um, $3.25 million is a lot of money. $2.7 million is a lot of money. $500,000 difference between those um, in the real world is a lot of money. So uh, let's not trivialize this. What we're talking about is what is deserved based on the comparables that are presented to us. Um, Mr. Duquette mentioned all my offensive numbers um, and being leaders among our team as well as in the top 10 in a couple of categories throughout the league. Um, and one thing that we failed to mention was that I came from a base that was as a catcher. And that can't be overlooked because a catcher is a premium position, much like shortstop, pitcher, and center fielder. And my salary from that base of catcher raised my base a tiny bit to the point that the gap that you're discussing right now makes sense if I would have stayed behind the plate. My offensive numbers for a catcher would have been tops in the league, would have been tops or one of the top two in all of baseball, and that premium that I gave up for the team, by the way, the team asked me to move from behind the plate to third base. I did this as a team player, even though it was an economical decision for the Cardinals, I did this as a team player with the specific caveat at the time that I would be compensated fairly as a result of making that move for the team. I don't think that's been presented here. Um, I think there one other thing that we haven't touched on is a specific comparable. A specific comparable is Craig Biggio because and he, he he relates because he is also a catcher that into his fourth year made a move to second base. His salary reflects what I'm asking for. His three plus year arbitration salary was $3.04 million that jumped then from th to $3.4 million. My offensive numbers from a power and run scoring and run production standpoint are better than Mr. Biggio's. My defensive statistics as a catcher were better than Mr. Biggio's and I think he's a fair comparable to throw into this conversation. Jim, 45 seconds okay. rebuttal to Todd. Well listen, Mr. Zeal, Todd, has made a very compelling argument uh, for his case as a catcher. If he was compared to other catchers, he would be ranked up there. But what we're uh, tasked to do here today is to uh, compare him to other third basemen. He's played at third base now for the last two seasons. And so 
you know, in the arbitration setting, other third basemen are comparable. Catchers are not. And in addition to that, you know, he didn't make the all-star team. As good as his second half was, it wasn't good enough to make the all-star team, which is another credible uh, piece of information that the arbiter has to consider in this setting for a, a big pay rise th like this. And wins above replacement, which was a stat that didn't exist back in 1993, but does now. He was seventh in wins above replacement in war. Uh, for, for uh, go, uh, going forward on the team for position players. So I still would uh, consider this is a very reasonable, very good pay raise, uh, Mr. Arbiter, uh, that he'll be making 2.7, which, by the way, is the same uh, as his uh, jersey number. Todd? Well, you know, you made a couple of great points there. One being that war, I have no idea what that is except for a card game. <laughs> um, and what wins about replacement, of course. Oh, got yes. it. Okay. Uh, so we're looking into the future. Um, and Benito Santiago, who was the preeminent catcher in all of the major leagues, we're comparable offensively, and Benito has a little bit of an edge on me offensively, I mean defensively, but he has, um, his, he's being paid at a premium that I should see some of still even going into. This is a compilation of your career. It's not just a single year. That's one thing that I think gets lost sometimes in arbitration. It's the comparables based on that last year's statistics but it's a compilation of the entire career because there has to be a base that you're going from that's leading up to it. My base was based on being a catcher. Final thoughts, Jim? Well, we actually did ask him to move over to third base. We thought it would be best both for the Cardinals and for Todd's career because we know catching can be a very difficult position. It's a grind back there, and so he kept allow him to stay on the field longer, and which allowed him to play more, which would allow him to put up those type of numbers. But we're still kind of trying to compare him to third baseman. He made a great argument about Santiago and Biggio, but they're catchers. He's now a third baseman. All right, Jim, I want to thank you for coming. Hi, Mr. Arbiter, thanks for your time. Todd, you as well. A pleasure. We'll make our ruling tomorrow. And so, uh, listen, no Academy Awards coming there. I, I, I want that to <laughs> really? be a, But I don't think, well, you were very good. Oh, okay. Jim was very good. Me and myself. What, what to say, a real-life uh, three-person arbitration panel is what there really normally right. is there. And each side usually brings five to seven people. So a, a little different than what we had. You lost in 94. A, a little different right? than the, the real experience yes. that I suffered, <laughs> which was four corporate layers, uh, lawyers coming in from Anheuser-Busch, and just, like, with a scalpel, precisely just carving me up into little pieces. <laughs> And then when they were done, I literally said to them, you know what, you guys, you've done a great job. I think I suck. And, and, and then they said, you know what, don't take it personally. Could you sign this for my daughter? She's a big fan. So, you know what, hey, arbitration is not always bad. No, no, no. Oh, and I, I will say this, because I, most of the time I've been in the room, that player uh, after, when I, this was why we did not with the Mets go a lot of times to arbitration, is... The last thing that you remember out of there is all the negative criticism, yeah. not the positive things, the negative things, and you're trying to trying to play to that during the course of the next year, and more times than not, that player doesn't have a very good season. So <laughs> really, the arbitration process in general is not for the faint of heart, and I don't really feel like it's a, it's a good process for the players.